You're listening to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. Welcome back. This is Where You Live with Gene and Tony. We're broadcasting from the Natural Green Lawn and Landscape Studios. We're brought to you by wow, American did you Family say Insurance. Natural green. <laughs> I did say natural yeah. green. Just as our music is saying, I'm a joker, I'm a smoker, I'm a midnight toker. We have been talking about marijuana today. But before we get back to that conversation, we're brought to you by American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency, and Extreme Exteriors. You can count on Extreme Exteriors for expert installation of your siding, roofing, soffits, fascia, decks, windows, and more. With their knowledge and experience, they can design the perfect solution to make your home beautiful and energy efficient saving you maintenance and money for years to come. Call Extreme Exteriors at 763-441-1334. Talk to Jeannie and tell them Jean and Tony sent you. It's time to hear from the Community Associations Institute. The CAI Minute is brought to you by New Concepts Rental Management. Whether you're an accidental landlord or a seasoned investor, New Concepts Rental Management can help you achieve your financial goals. New Concepts Rental Management can advise and guide you through every aspect of the business. Call me, Tony Crockett, at New Concepts Rental Management, 952-922-2500. Are you a member of the Community Associations Institute? For nearly 40 years, CAI has provided education and resources to volunteer homeowners who govern community associations and the professionals who support them. Visit caionline.org to learn more. That address again is caionline.org. CAI helps community association board members by providing online resources, in-person training, and hard copy publications written by association management experts. CAI offers community managers professional development, networking opportunities, and a certification program that's established as the industry standard nationwide. Minnesota has its own chapter of the Community Associations Institute to bring resources and tools from community associations around the country right to your home. Visit CAIMN.com to learn more and become a member of CAI today. Your community and management company will benefit from your involvement. Join the Community Associations Institute today at CAIMN.com and click on Membership. So we've been talking about the Colorado Amendment to the con- their Constitution that's allowing for the possession, growing, processing, transporting, and presumably using of marijuana for personal use, and how that's going to impact communities where there's shared space or shared walls or shared ventilation, yep. such as a homeowners association. Yep. Yeah, and some of this is fall, uh, falling uh, just contradictory to uh some of the people who have been proponents for this and have been opponents of uh, allowing people uh, the freedom to uh, smoke cigarettes sure. in their condo sure. unit. Yeah, is this a contradiction of all the Clean Indoor Air Acts that have been passed by so many states? Uh, or is it something that's going to have to fall under the purview of the Clean Indoor yeah. Air Act? That's the open question. Yeah, now this uh, Jerry Orton, who's an attorney, and I think he uh, specializes uh, in doing work for homeowner associations, uh-huh. okay. uh, spoke recently at a, a yearly trade show for CAI uh, Colorado and was bringing up a lot of these issues. Mm-hmm. He, uh, he feels that um, even though this is embedded in the, consti- in the Constitution and may seem like it's going to be very difficult, he says he feels uh, ultimately that um, HOAs are going to be able to have the ability uh, to prohibit uh, pot smoking and possession and, okay. growing and growing on, on the property. Uh, he points out to another passage of Amendment 64, uh, and it seems pretty plain to me. Seems clear. Yeah, but again, a, don't you make the same mistake I made. I, I know. Of counting on common sense. Exactly. Yeah. But, folks, here's what it says. It says, nothing in this section shall prohibit a person, an employer, school, hospital, detention facility, corporation, or any entity who occupies, owns, or controls a property. Nothing's going to prohibit them from prohibiting or otherwise regulating the possession, the consumption, use, display, distribution, sale, transportation, growing of marijuana on or in the property. That seems pretty plain so language to me. This is the this is the passage that will 
uh, empower homeowner associations yes. to make their own decisions about this. I think anything that helps associations make their own decisions is a good thing. It's interesting, though, this passage says if you even just occupy a property, <laughs> you can you have a say in whether or not marijuana is grown or used on that property. Yeah. So, gosh, that would mean even, say, in a rental property, if your neighbor doesn't like it, that there's some say possibly That they may there. be able to say something about that, yeah. Uh, one of the things, though, that he uh, points out, uh, though, that I think uh, would be good for us to discuss a little bit, uh, he said, uh, he talks about this idea. He said that uh, he thinks that people will need to line up strong evidence to support such restrictions. He said that could be very important uh, since he said we're talking about a lawsuit challenge that will probably inevitably start over this whole thing. I see. And I, I, to me, I was thinking about that because he was implying here that, well, you know what? It's not good enough to have the premise that we're owners of the property, you know, uh, X number of owners, and most of us don't want to have this at the property. So uh, majority rules. So the majority should rule. I mean, to me, that seems... Pretty cut and dry. Yeah. I mean, I don't know any state government that's ever gotten involved. And we've talked about this before. How about the flagpole issue last right. year, right? That's right. You had a homeowner who may live in a homeowner association, uh, one unit uh, with uh, 50 others, and they want to display a, a flag. Uh, they, If that bill had passed, they would have been allowed, even though the other 50 homeowners would have said no, because that would have uh, the the right of the individual would have trumped that of the uh, majority. Mm -hmm. But why why should that why should that be the case? Because if we were to take a look at a uh, home that's owned by four individuals, a single family home, and one out of the four wanted to display a flag and the other three didn't, would the state legislature even get involved? They would say, "Hey, wait a minute, you guys." That's between you. You, yeah. you, you four guys yeah. own this, bought this property together, <laughs> work it out. The state doesn't need to be involved. Right. That's but, a good point. But now all of a sudden, because we're talking about a bigger entity, and that's all that a homeowner association is, however, not necessarily, not necessarily, there are a number of HOAs that are four units. Yeah, that's true. Six units, too. But why, why would they not be able to have that ability. It seems to make like, their own decision. Yes. Uh, it, it seems like, uh, you know, he is saying you better come up with some strong evidence because uh, you uh, can't be able to make a decision. He said uh, uh, associations have a set of documents that establish them and define restrictions and rules that are binding on owners. Okay. He said, uh, he said, you can present the question this way. How many unit owners in any condominium community would like owners to regulate what happens inside their unit? Most owners would say they're not really interested in that. But to amend, you generally need 67% of owners to approve it. So even if it's legally possible, it might not be practically possible, he says. So you're back to the context. Yeah, yeah. I. You were going to say? No, well, I was just going to say, he, he makes the point that certainly there will be a lawsuit challenging any homeowners association that starts to regulate this, or there, mm -hmm. there likely will be a lawsuit, and there's a lot of open questions. Yeah. Like you said, even if they decide it's legal for an association to make these restrictions, the association still needs to get a super majority of its members to agree to the regulation yeah. of it. So uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see how this all pans out. Do you think marijuana is going to be legalized in more states in our country? Do you think this is something that's kind of sweeping the nation? Oh, I, I think uh, I think it is something that uh, probably we're going to see more and more. We see coming that. As, coming, as yeah. time goes on, don't you? I do. I do. And so that's, it'll be interesting to find out how other states yeah. handle it. But- just as, and, I, and this is an important point, just as each state has the state rights to be able to decide that for themselves, 
I would think that it would be anathema for any state legislator to think that property owners would have any less right than the state themselves in being able to decide for themselves what they will or will not allow. That's central to an HOA. It's central to an HOA uh, to decide just because they don't like it to approve one color outside an Mm -hmm. HOA to Uh be painted and Mm -hmm. another not to be. That's right. That's right. You would think the proponents of states' rights, the people that fight so hard to hold on to states' rights, would also be in the corner of homeowners associations, wouldn't yes. you, to fight for the rights of homeowner associations to make their own decisions? Yes. Now, I'm, I, I think everybody knows I'm, I'm a cigar smoker. I mm. enjoy cigars, mm-hmm. and I certainly enjoy the right that I have to enjoy a cigar. But then I also recognize and understand the right that an HOA has in if the majority of the homeowners are, are stating that they want to prohibit that, I understand that. Yeah. They have that they have that ability. Yeah. That's being consistent. That is being consistent. Yes. That's right. Uh, so anyway, it'll be interesting to see uh, how this uh, plays out as time goes on. Well, let's take a break right now. Don't go away. A lot more of Where You Live with Gene and Tony on AM 1280, The Patriot. 